Welcome to another Warcraft the Audio Commentary. Today, guys, we're going to be watching another game. Game number three in the series of practice games. I don't know what you call it. Um, once again, we are joined by the most wonderful deluxe edition of the Big Q, the Big Quacker. Quacker Master. The Quacker Meister. The Quackinator. His name is Duck. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Ready for some more games? Before that, I uh, am tornado sweeps ready. you away? <laughs> Look, I don't... It's October. If I'm, it's not October. Scariest right. month of the year. What are you dressing up for Halloween? Um, I'm, I was thinking about being a twister. I was going to put like a white sheet over my head and then cut some eye holes. I don't know how that would go. Like a twister, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or Ca Casper. Casper. I don't, wow, it's on my mind. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> The tornado scare is real. Um, no, why was I saying twister? Casper. Like Casper, you know Casper. Like yes. All right. So this game, Moon switching it up, going back to the warden. He loves the warden. I mean, how can oh. you not though? I fits the style you know? perfectly. So many options. Whether you want to target heroes or just use your AOE with the fan of knives, and it's good all around hero. I, on this map, though, I don't like it as much because I think it's harder to AOW creep on this map. Do abuse the AOW creeping as much? I mean, um, you do obviously get two oranges, but. I believe he's gonna AOW creep the merchant as long as I mean as well as this goblin lab, and then that'll go to the gold mine, and so he, he can still do it to an extent. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it's not. I definitely wouldn't look at it as crippled. I just I, I wouldn't look at it as good as like on say TS or TM. Uh, looks like Moon's about to get a lightning shield on his archer again. Actually, it's getting blocked by the archer. Oh. unfortunate AI. And then yeah, there he goes, gets that lightning shield. Very nice stun. What? I thought that would have went on the wisp because he, no, I thought it normally did it on the uh, the middle of the three. That time it just went to the left. Maybe there's some AI I don't know about there. Uh, oh, he's this, getting close. So this game, uh, I try to adapt from what happened in the last one. Uh, you see, I get the stag early and I get the rod, and I want to put a little more pressure on him this game. I want to be able to ghoul creep without being interrupted. I want to have him on his side of the map. That way I can... I have a little more control over this game of what he does. Maybe get a faster level too. Hopefully, God. <laughs> <laughs> Lose all my. So, memory. so is this the first time you're seeing the warden in this game? Yeah, correct. And if I believe I didn't scale yet, but I think I end up going. Oh, there we go, a coil. Um, that's personal preference. I think I got coil because I want. Uh, I want to deny this green camp. I want to take that over. So you see, I, I send that skeleton in his base to make him chase it, and then. I believe I want to creep this green camp if I can. So I'm probably going to summon a rod and then, yeah. Are you talking I, about I just, the one up here at the left or the one uh, down yeah, his green, the Murlocs? His green camp. At night he'll probably go away and then my goal is to creep that while creeping, creeping my lab at the same time. While um, creeping it? Yes, while creeping. <laughs> it's my favorite uh, creativity. That's my favorite too. <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> fun. Anyway, yeah, so it's spot on. Uh, Warden is going to kind of back off here. The green camp that he would have to fight over, he, he's gonna, he, would have a, he would have to contend with Coil. And he's already kind of behind on XP, and he's got this Ancient of War up, so he may as well go for it. Although, maybe I'm wrong, because he is trying to fight you for it. Okay, he sold his teepee, got boots. I can't, oh, I can't hit him. What is, um, I don't know what he's doing, though. Uh, he's going to probably... Ancient War creep that. Yeah, I think he wanted to archer creep that green camp while Ancient War creeping this with the warden. So you pulled the wool over Moon's eyes when you went there. He was not expecting that. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, this is going to delay him getting level three, which is huge. Oh, he just uh, stole your items. That's okay. Um, so right here, I come into his base and I see he's still at Tree of Life, and this instantly tells me it's either two Ancient of Wars or very fast expansion, and then. Right there, he's he's got slightly delayed reaction on his wisp, which is really unusual for a player like Moon, and that tells me right away he's Ancient of War creeping something difficult. And then if we look down, he is with the Ancient of War. So that tells me right right away he's either there at the gold mine, likely there. Some very high level analysis right there. And also, I like how you're splitting your all of your units to different wisps. It makes it much harder to micro as the elf player than if they're all on the same wisps. And obviously, you got to keep the skeletons apart so they don't get detonated on. But it was good. And you're still doing it actively across the yeah. map. So my Death Knight just checked this camp, and then that confirms that it is a second Ancient of War at the Merchant Camp, and that I'm safe to creep this because he's all the way across the map. And because he had a staff home, or however his warden got back, he's now not able to stop me from creeping this. 
So which slight adjustment. And I'm gonna get level three about the same time as him, which is nothing wrong with that. It's exactly. Well, what you got it first, which is great. Surprisingly, Moon still's not uh, selected a second skill, so that's that's interesting. Just kind of waiting, chilling out, seeing if he wants to do the blink or the the Phantom Knives. <laughs> He's going to that green green camp, but uh, that green <laughs> camp. <laughs> that green get level queen. three. He's still level two, so that early play really is delaying him. Because now he has to go and creep one of these side camps, which is it's just time consuming. He wants to be harassing with his warden right now. Like my acolytes are all mining. Like they're the most fragile units in the game, and they're able to mine freely. That's that's perfect. Yeah. Also, I'll tell you this: last game, um, we saw that you had. Obviously, you're playing against a different style and a different strategy. Uh, but last game, you went for the very fast tier three. This time, you're going for the lich and the slaughterhouse before going for the tier three, which I know you generally have to do against the warden. But because your 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 start was so strong this time, and also going for that ancient of war is wonderful right there, doing some extra damage, just kind of forcing and screwing up any intentional uh, further on. AOW creeping that he would like to do. Yeah, if I would have killed that Ancient War, that would have been really nice. But still, even just putting pressure on it, it's really good. It makes him not be able to creep that as quickly. And because I saw he had a delayed start, he went uh, two Ancient Wars, and I was still able to kill a couple Wisps, but I got a really good creeping route. Um, I think that I have a pretty nice timing coming up with uh, Fiends and Statues, and I can hopefully do a lot of damage before he gets greater bear form, whatever it's called. Master training. Master. And also, this game, just real quick, this game was played several months ago when Moon was still playing, but we're going ahead and we're casting them now because uh, they're good games and we'd like to watch them. And obviously, the undead player is the co caster, in case anyone didn't get the memo. So, for the people joining us right now, they were asking questions, sorry. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, answer all questions. <laughs> uh, Moon yeah, that means the shredder. That's, ask I like Doc that some choice. questions. <laughs> I meant ask you questions. Oh. No, I'm fine with questions too. Good. Uh, questions are great. So if you have any questions for a pretty much, a, I, I'm going to call him a pro undead player. This is probably the best time you're ever going to have. And in the middle of the map, with the wand of the illusion for the scout. Uh, such a good item for players who are unaware like me. <laughs> <laughs> Warden kind of running away. So once again, I notice he doesn't have any, like he has a ring of protection. I mean, it doesn't really help his, like the circlet helps his regen, but like the ring, it just doesn't add much value to him. So my goal is if there's ever a shop, just target that down and then nuke his hero. You see, I bought two health potions and a mana potion. Uh, I'm going to try to spread the ghouls here on archers, make them have to run rather than attack. And then my fiends and heroes will go on the warden and a couple ghouls too. So here's a simple question. I mean, you're doing a fantastic job in this fight, but uh, you have such a wonderful op opportunity here that you don't really take advantage of for canceling those lures. Is there any reason that you didn't want to split your army just up a little bit so you could be attacking one of those? You could have taken one of those down, probably. Oh, the thing is, I had two fiends out, and like they don't really have a use first, the warden or archers. So I'm like, okay, it gets dryads out. They have a use. I'd rather kill like its archers and get his shops down and lower his moonwell juice because it's daytime. Like, look at it. They're all empty. What can he do? If I kill that shop, it's going to be really hard for his warden to ever be in a fight. Unless I coil uh, an illusion, which I think I have <laughs> years of remembering. Fair enough. That, that is a pretty good argument for that, uh, which... Normally is one that I wouldn't consider, um, but nice to hear it. I will say in this fight, this game has gone exceptionally well for you so far. And this is where the Ancient of War living earlier comes into play, because now he has these two eight extra Ancient of Wars. They soak up a lot of damage. They get in the way. They do good damage too. They take. They definitely buy time, and that looks like what he's trying to do here is just buy as much time as possible, because he's not really trying to directly engage you. He's just kind of trying to run around and force you out a little bit. It's quite an art. Interestingly enough, he gets abolish on his dryads. I'm, I'm surprised by that. It's very confident play that he's going for research as while this is going on. His micros. He says two unselected skills. I, he's just. He's just. He's just moon. <laughs> I mean, he's just. He is so confident in doing this. I would love to ask him. I would love to know. I guess he's... This, I'm almost tier three too, so. I, I almost wonder if it's not something along the lines of, well, if he does, if, he, if I survive this, then I'm going to be a, kind of ahead, and if I, 
if I do go for the researches, and if I don't go for the researches and I survive this, I'm going to be behind still. So maybe that's what he's thinking? Maybe? I don't uh, know. Right there, my fiend walked past the building shop. Uh, if I notice that and kill it, the game oh. pretty much just ends right there. Oh yeah, because he, he took down the other one, so he doesn't have any kind of yeah. regeneration. Except for the, the stuff from the shop down there that's really expensive. So right now, I'm thinking transition to destroyers, limit Moonwell so he can't get bears out. And then I see the shop, and I'm like, crap. That is rough. And he's gonna be- oh, getting the Orb of Venom is gonna make this a little bit harder, too. And now he has bear form, which... is never good for the undead. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I like he that he's using the Shredder, the shredder as well. Yeah, he's oh. done a really good job keeping his units alive, buying time, running them at just the perfect spots. With bear form out, that's... That should be the end of this initial attack. I'm gonna need to get destroyers, probably a Naga. But with no TP, it's gonna be hard to get out. I'm gonna definitely have to fight this. Oh yeah, that's a good point. You don't have a TP. So this is a difficult I, fight because he's got so many bears right now. And you don't you have, have the mana. Naga though. The slow on the Naga is great. I mean, the Warden, it just can't attack because it, yeah. it has to be constantly running. And now it's nighttime, so things are starting to look like maybe he's bought enough time. But again, still, I would still say you're in a fairly strong position. Because he yeah. did take the shop down again. And he is still kind of, I mean, if we look at his supply, he's 39 out of 40 food. So he can't build up his army beyond this. Another great heal Ooh. scroll on this warden. He's done a great job of using this shop. Oh, is he going to stay? Wow, that might stay alive. Wow. At least we'll get this dryad. <laughs> well, at least I'll <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Saving a fiend is probably better than killing that triad in this case, because it's going to soak up mana for the healing anyway. Yeah, I'm low on number, so I have to rebuild ghouls, which, eh, it's not the best, but... It slows down your momentum, so that's always... Uh, right here, I start to creep, because if you notice my hero levels, 3-1-1 versus, what is that, like, almost level 5? Yeah. Definitely need to get, like, level 3 lich here, and an orb would be really good. And this is a mistake. Right here, I should be creeping the bottom side of the map. Uh, creeping doesn't benefit him at this point, rather than golden items, because he's going to hit level 5 and then gain nothing. So I have all to gain from creeping and everything to lose from pushing here. That's a good point. Are you going for a push? Because it looks like you're oh, going I, for a push. <laughs> I am going for a destroyer push. <laughs> Fair enough. Like right I mean, I can see the reasoning behind it. I do have the invulnerability potion and the heal scroll this game. Last game I lost because I didn't have a heal scroll, so let's let's see if this plays an effect. Immediately being pretty strong, forcing the bears mostly out of position. They're gonna just come right back in though, once that, the mana runs, runs out. Level 5 being picked up for the warden, a bear finally going down. Death Knight taking so some hits a lot well. of pressure on that Death Knight. Um, level oh, 3 wow. Shadow Strike is very strong. Did he get oh, this three? is gonna be really tricky. Um, I realize I'm out of my, like, Invulnerability potions, no TV, so I pick up a Zeppelin. So That's a good just, call. Yeah. And it denies him from being able to pick him one up, too, just in case. Mainly to keep the Death Knight alive, though. We don't want to see any repeats of the uh, the Moon Zeppelin video. Oh, my God. On <laughs> the <Ternistan>. stand. Yep. <laughs> you learned that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. That was amazing. I know. So uh, let's see how he handles had... this. Coming out at the perfect time. Um, the Zeppelin helps, but I mean, there's so many dryads. Yeah. Lots of good focus fire on the Warden. He's getting kind of low, but unfortunately, it's been night for a long time. Those Moonwells are up. Right clicks on the Death Knight. I think you were about to kill the Warden, but with the Death Knight down. You don't kill a Warden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. That's a wonderful game, uh, but that's game number three, right? And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, we have one more. The Big Daddy number four. So that game, we saw some minor adjustments that really paid off in the early game. The Getting the skeletons from the stag in the middle of the map and then putting pressure on while creeping and then putting pressure on also let me know where he's what he's doing on the other side of the map. He's not attacking, he's not paying attention to his wisps, he's power AOW creeping. So, I mean, that's good information to know. And then learning that, like, oh, I should have crept there instead of push that second time. And it'll be interesting to see how I take that advice going to the next game and see if I can uh, use it to adapt. 
Absolutely. I, I definitely think it's nice watching the evolution of your strategy and kind of responding to the elf's uh, different quirks, because obviously no two players play exactly the same, so it's always good to be able to scout those things out. Obviously, that's another cool thing about why pro games are so much fun, if, they, if they're if they practice partners, like watching Thu vs. Yumiko. They just oh, yeah. play so weird. Because <laughs> they know how each other plays, and they're like trying to metagame each other. They have um, such good synergy, too, those oh. Thu and Yumiko. Have you played them also, in twos? Oh, I, they did that. They did uh, the. There was that two v two tournament not too long ago, and they just destroyed it with double human. <laughs> they could off race and win that. They're so good. It was ridiculous. Like they, they were doing like these crazy footman strategies. Like Yumiko would stay one and just like th two or three barracks and mass footman with the blood mage, and then Thu would be like teching up, and <laughs> it was just awesome. Yeah, it's fun to watch for sure. All right, uh, but that is game number three, guys. So we'll be going into game number four. We're going to go to a short little break, and we'll be right back. So if you're watching on YouTube, stay tuned. If you're watching on Twitch, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Thanks for watching. See you in a minute. Shab How sad. How Damn. sad.